Hey everybody, it's uh, Jester here with another Jester Draft, so let's get started. Hmm. A couple of good cards here. Um, I think the best and the standout is definitely going to be this Aurelian Merchant, which is going to be our pick. But um, apart from that, I think the Sharpen Reflex, the Wormstone, the Scavenging Spike Pack are all cards you wouldn't be too unhappy to see in your deck. The rest of these are pretty lackluster though, so we'll go with an early Aurelian Merchant right here. Huh. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Um, are we double splashing? No. So, okay. Tempting, but the reason we wouldn't double splash is because... Well, hmm. Maybe, maybe we could, actually. Yeah, so the reason you don't want to double splash is because, like, it, it sort of cannibalizes your market in that you only have five slots regardless of how many merchants you're playing. It's not like you would get five for the Aurelia Merchant and five for the Carindon Merchant, you know? It's just, it, they would just sort of be, uh, like, all thrown in together. That being said, it can be kind of tough to use all five slots. So, typically in draft, you'll have, like, maybe one Sigil on color, maybe one or two really good cards that are very situational that you just can't play in the main deck, and then you would have just sort of a hodgepodge after that of, you know, nonsense that... Like, for example, with the Karandar merch, you might have, like, a Harbinger's Bind in the sideboard if your opponent's at three life exactly and you want to end the game. Um, gosh, that's really interesting, though. I've never actually come across this situation before. Maybe... Because there are some really good cards in this pack as well. Like, the Pensive Loom and the Master of Arms are top-tier commons. Uh, the Karandar Merchant's pretty good. Um, I don't know. I think we can give it a shot. Maybe see how this goes. We'll take a Karandar Merchant right here. Hmm. Okay, so moving on to pack three, or pick three rather, we've got a couple of good cards here. I think the Corrupted Umbrin is pretty good. I think the Amber and Stinger is fine too, but it's... Honestly, I, I think this card is really just think of it as a three mana 2-4. The rest of it is sometimes relevant, but it doesn't come up terribly so. Not to mention that 1-1s one with Deadly are... Like, they can either stall out entire boards, or they can just be wiped out in an instant by, like, a hot blood barbarian creating a tinker. Um, or, excuse me, a temper. Uh, I was looking at a workshop tinker, which is notably one of the other good cards in this pack. Um, Stinger's good, workshop tinker's good, ruination sled is good, but I think I'm gonna go with Corrupted Umbrant. I'm a big fan of this card, and I think Lifesteal's fantastic for helping you pull back into the game against more aggressive decks. Hmm. Okay. Um couple of notables here. I think the two best cards are going to be the Watchful Aminera and the Peacekeeper's Helm. Uh, Watchful Aminera, it's just great to have incidental ways to filter through your deck. And then the Peacekeeper's Helm, I think, is a fantastic card. Uh, when you're ahead, it can only push damage when you're behind. It can buy you some time. As well as maybe make a blocker that's big enough to stop whatever it is your opponent's doing. Uh, we have kind of a goofy deck going on right here, but... I don't want to lean too much into colors at this point, so I think I'm just going to take the Peacekeeper's Helm, and maybe... I think committing this early, even though we have very good picks, is a bit of a mistake. So we're going to lean into the Peacekeeper's Helm pick right here, and then if time seems more open later on, we can pick up some time cards. So we'll take a Peacekeeper's Helm. Speaking of time cards... <laughs> okay, um, these all seem really good. Uh, well, that's not true. Not all of them. Uh, I think the time cards are all very playable. I'm a big fan of Training Ground, uh, and I think Subterranean Century, Primeval Plover, and Sandglass Palmer are all cards I wouldn't be unhappy playing in my deck. Uh, I think the rest of these are a little bit lackluster. Scavenging Spike Pack is playable, but I'm not a big fan of Tend the Flock, Spore Breath, or Crown Watch Recruiter. Mm. Now, I think these are all pretty close, but I might have to give them to Training Ground, because I think Training Ground does... Training Ground does a lot of small things really well, and because it's so low cost, it really helps smooth out your early game, which, if there are two cards that are pretty similar in power level, and one of them is for the early game and one of them is for the mid game, I would definitely lean towards the one that's a little bit more skewed towards the early game, especially this early in the draft, because you get a lot of games that are just non-game, so to speak, where you just can't find your power or your influence group or something like that. And having a card like Training Ground gives you proactive plays, things you can be doing with your mana in the early turns of the game, 
in addition to putting a body on the table, which can kind of blunt any sort of early aggression. So if you're like deciding between, for example, subterranean entry and training ground, there's something in the draft, I'd go with the training ground because I think this will help me get to the mid late game. And then if we see a subterranean sentry again, like if we are faced with this decision again, we might pick the subterranean sentry. But we'll take the training ground right here. Hmm. Okay. None of these cards are very good. Um, I think Lockhorns might be the least bad. So we'll take a Lockhorns right here. Of note, it looks like there's no justice in this pack, so this Peacekeeper's Helm might have been a mistake. Anyway, we'll take a Lockhorns. Hmm. The grimy Alp Luatra is actually not too bad. Uh, 5 mana, 4 3 flyer. Even though it's dealing 1 damage to your every turn, I think it can be good in certain board states. And the rest of these, it looks like fire is pretty open, but I also haven't seen too many good fire cards. Like, I haven't seen any hot low rare areas. I haven't seen any new welding torches. We saw a couple of, what do we see, like fiery fissures? I saw some fiery fissures along the way, but those aren't like big enough to pull you towards that color. But we'll take a grimy right here. Uh, I guess of note, Grave Tender is another possible pick, but I think the floor on this card is just a little bit too low for me to be excited to play it. So we'll take Grimy right here. Um, oh god. <laughs> do we take a Burglarize for the market? I think we do. Yeah. Time and Justice are not here in any capacity. And I think Lunging Wisp is just a bad card. So we'll take a Burglarize for the market. Um, do we think a Betray the Cause for the market? Yeah, I'm not playing any of these cards. So we'll take a Betray the Cause. Uh, sure. Vile Varmint. And it does look like... A couple of these dried up, unfortunately, these colors. Um, sure. We can take a Cerso's Choice. A Dire Claw. Howler. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Ooh, this looks pretty good. I'm probably going to end up taking this Beast Caller's Amulet. Um, let's see. There's a couple of notable cards in this pack. I think the Bold Adventure is fine. The, the Initiative Sands is fine. Uh, Beast Caller's Amulet is quite good. And... Yeah, I don't really think we're going to be in Justice or Fire, unless those are very open in packs 2 and 3. Uh, the Crest is also good, but as we have zero Fire cards and zero Primal cards, I'm not too high on Crest of Fury. So we'll take a Beast Caller's Amulet right here, and let's pick up a couple of good 2-drops along the way. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's time we switch colors. We could... We could take a Disassembler here. Hmm. Maybe not. It might be a little early. I'm a little worried about the number of two drops we have. But I think Disassembler could find some... There could be some pretty good cards with Disassembler um, in the red-black colors, just for Grenadins. Like Grenadin and Bellower, Disassembler. Then we pick up some Scrap Hounds or something. I think that could be pretty strong. Um, and we know red was relatively open in pack one. So I think it might be time to jump ship. We'll take a... Yeah, we'll take a disassembler here. See how that goes. Hmm. Okay. This looks like an easy rapid shot. Big fan of this card. Um, other notables. Frontier Confessor is pretty good. Felon Banner for Splashing Blue. But that's kind of a stretch as we don't know... Like, seeing as we don't know what colors we're in already. Uh, so far, rather. And yeah, I think we're in for a rapid shot right here. Hmm. Thorn Beast is good. Granite and Drone is good. Arc Record Keeper is quite good as well. Um, I think I might be in for a Granite and Drone, which seems a little bit strange. I think the Arc Record Keeper is the best card in Vacuum, but uh, the Time and Justice ships seem to have sailed. Uh, Thorn Beast would also be a good card, but I think this card is... I don't know. I'd, I'd rather kind of start dipping into Granite and Synergy because... I have a feeling that these will be open towards the mid and late game. Yeah, we'll take a Granite and Drone right here. Um, I think Thorn Beast is better, but not by too much compared to Granite and Drone. Hmm. Seek Power. I do love me some Seek Power. Yeah, a lot of Gorgon Fanatics going around for some reason, but I think this is an easy Seek Power. Uh, other notables, I think Powder Keg Rider is good, but not great. Uh, if we pick up a couple more Granite, I'd be happy grabbing one of these along the way. But yeah, we'll take a Seek Power right here. Always a solid pickup. Uh, oh, wow. Oni Ronin's a good sign for us. That means there's not a lot of fire being picked in the second pack. 
Um, either that or this pack was just loaded with good fire cards to begin with. But uh, compared to everything else, yeah, Cover of Darkness is the other choice. I think we'll take an OD run in. Pretty happy with that. Um, what is this? Recogulator versus Trigger Man. Huh. I think we could take the Recogulator right here. I'm not very high on this. As far as, like, Credit Grenadine cards go, this is one of the weaker ones. Um, but... I think the Trigger Man is close to unplayable without Gunslingers. So we'll take a Recogulator. Hmm. Oh, there's our Gunslinger. I guess we'll, yeah, we're kind of lacking in two drops. We'll take a Flashy Duelist right here. Still Powder Heretic is fine. Nothing exciting. But sure. Take a Flashy Duelist. Oh, wow, Scrap Hound. Yeah, Scrap Hound is good. Uh, kind of, it's one of the Granite and Payoff cards, so we're happy taking that. Uh, ooh. Stone Scar Banner. Stone Scar Banner is actually not that great for us. Even though it looks like we're moving into a Stone Scar deck, I think the card itself is. Well, you, you typically want your fixing to be one of your main colors and your splash color. Versus having fixing that as both of your main colors is fine, but it's often not necessary. Especially in draft, is when you're not playing a lot of like high influence costs. We'll take a Granite Waystone right here, though. Very happy with that. And that's a very late Granite drone. We are excited to be picking that. And, uh, yeah. Well, hmm. Okay. I don't see a lot of... Well, okay, I see some pretty good cards here. But before we move into that, let's go ahead and trim down here a little bit. I think a couple of these just aren't going to see play. I think the Burglarize and the Betray the Cause can be moved to the pool, and we can make the market out of those later if we need them. Uh, gosh, Aurelia Merchant? We could like play two merchants, one black and splash a white one. Um, Lockhorns, Rapid Shot, yeah, these are fine. Don't want to play the Vile Varmint. Horror Banner is not going to make it in. Okay, uh, let's see. Hmm, it's probably going to be Splash Vanquish. We do have a Seek Power, and we can keep an eye out for not a Horror Banner, maybe like an Arjun Port or like a Rakano Banner. But I think this card is good enough to make me want to splash it. Uh, there's not too much else going on in the pack. Fel Banner can enable some blue splashes, but we don't have any blue cards worth splashing. What do we have, like a Cerso's choice? Yeah. We'll take a Vanquish right here and keep an eye out for some fixing. Oh, wow. Um, that's tough. Because... I don't think we have any Gunslingers. I guess we have a Flashy Duelist, so that'd be pretty cool there. Um... Arc Sentry is really good too, but I don't really see us. I think we're kind of firmly into Stone Scar at this point, so we can't really play green. Um, we wouldn't be too unhappy playing this Thorn Beast. And if we wanted to get cheeky, I think this Madness wouldn't be the worst pickup. Hmm. I would rather play Madness over Betray the Cause in the market because it's the same thing, and Betray the Cause has the Warp Clause on it, which is why it costs more mana. But I think here we just take a Thorn Beast, because I'm pretty happy with this card. And I think it'll be... It's just a good solid all-around card, so yeah. We'll take a Thorn Beast. Aid of the Horu. Huh. Now, this card is unplayable in drafts. And I do need some for my Constructed Collection. But seeing as there is a Scrap Hound being offered right here, and we are definitely in for Scrap Hounds, I think I'm going to have to take this instead. Yeah. Sucks. I lost to an Aid of the Horu earlier today. Um, let's see, moving on. I think Granite Acolyte's quite good. I think Xenon Destroyer is also quite good. I'm not really... Hmm. Yeah, I think the Aurelian Merchant's dream might be dead at this point, but... Xenon Destroyer, Granite Acolyte... I think the... Hmm. Do we have any, like, quick draw guys? I guess a Corrupted Umbrin? Yeah, I don't know. I think these are both pretty close in power, um, and neither of them are doing like really exciting things in our deck. Um, I think I might just take the Granite Acolyte for the flexibility, because I think Xenon Destroyer is like the floor on this card is like pretty low when you're behind, and the Granite Acolyte I think will always have some impact on the board. Um, maybe not as much as Xenon Destroyer, but I think it's like a little bit better when you're behind at least. So we'll take a Granite Acolyte right here, huh? more nonsense we could take a cover of darkness for the board and i think that's what we're gonna do 
Yeah, let's do that. We'll do a cover of darkness, maybe for the market. Oh wow, that's some good stuff. Um, so there's that Argentport banner we wanted. We would be splashing a single Vanquish, maybe a Peacekeeper Salm. Um, alternatively, Scrap Hound number three. I think we have a lot of one drops at this point. This might honestly be too many. I think I'm in for an Argentport banner right here. Uh, Thorn Beast is also good. Combust is definitely playable in our deck. Um, we'll take a banner. Oh, that felt weird. Um, oh, wow. Finest Star is quite good, as is Gun Down. I think we have to take... I mean, I know we're splashing green, but Finest Star just seems so loose to splash. I think we just have to take a Gun Down right here. Um, another Granite Drone is super awesome as well. But... I think we have enough one drops already to sort of pass that up. Hmm. Yeah, we're a little bit light on removal. Let's take a gun down. Um, sure, let's take another gun down. <laughs> we're only ever going to play one cover of darkness. I think that's a perfectly fine market card. Another Archmore banner wouldn't be bad, but like I said, I think we're a little bit short on removal at this point. So I'll take one of these. Uh, oh, wow. A madness versus a second granite acolyte. Now, I think here I might be in for the Madness. Okay, we're not playing Aurelian Merchant at this point. Um, probably not playing Peacekeeper's Home. That might change. It's a little bit messy. Yeah, this deck's looking a bit messy. Um, yeah, I think I'm in for a Madness. We're just not going to play the Betray the Cause. Uh, Helpful Doorbelt's not getting played. Strength of Many's not getting played. Tinker's not getting played. You're kidding me. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, okay. Well, let's do a quick unit count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Torch is good. I do like this card a lot. It might be better than Karen Dawn Merchant. But having a second merchant is also kind of funny. Hmm. Let's see. We're gonna have a burglarize, a madness. I guess we should move that over. Maybe a cover of darkness. Maybe a probably not betray the cause of a playing madness. Uh, vile varmint. Hmm. Well, this is a weird deck. Um. Yeah, I don't really feel like I want to pass up. Hmm. I don't really feel like I want to pass up a Welding Torch. Because our deck is kind of light on removal as it is. Well, we have like Vanquish, two gun downs. Yeah, okay, we'll take the Carandon Merchant. Okay. Um. Wow. There's no good fire, no good shadow in this pack. I guess we have potentially a Grave Marker Oni or a Banish Number. Yeah, I'll take a Grave Marker when he's probably not going to play it. Um, wow, there's that Welding Torch we wanted. Well, we also have a Premier 2 drop in the form of Lethrite Target Color, but I think we got to take the Torch this time around. This card is amazing. Uh, torch goes away. Sure, I think I'm in for a Hair Trigger Pistol. Hmm. Yeah, goes really well with Corrupted Umbrin, Grimy, Alfluatra. I guess the alternative would be like Rotor Cycle, Umber Death Watcher, Feed the Flames. Yeah, we'll take a Hair Trigger Pistol. Hmm. None of these look very good. We'll take a Clan Wall Breaker, because that might see play. Um, Final Shot, I guess? I'm not a big fan of this card, but it might see play in our deck. Who knows? Let's take a Final Shot. Um, no Fire. Wild Varmint, I guess. Oh, there's a Cut Ties. What a blessing. Yeah, we'll take a late Cut Ties. Uh, manufacture is pretty good. Yeah, especially since we have some Granite Energy. We'll take a Manufacture. I don't want to play a Robo Buddy, but it's on color. Grave Tender. And then the last card is a Crown Launch Recruiter, which we are not playing. So, okay. Grave okay, Crown Launch Recruiter. All right, so we have... That's 27, including the two power. So, with a Seek Power, we can probably play one more card? 
Hmm. That's not good. You never want to be in a position where you can, like, add playables. You always want to be cutting them, if possible. Oh, we can build our market as well. So we'll put in a Madness. We'll put in a Burglarize. Cover of Darkness. We could put in Betray the Cause, but that seems a little redundant. I guess a Vile Varmint? Sure. Can't imagine where we'd want that, but... Uh, and then a Shadow Sigil, I guess. Yeah. What else is there? Dagger Claw Howler? It's not really worth playing. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess that's it. Okay. That was easy. Um, let's see. One more card to put in. Well, you're not playing the Grave Marker only. We are short on units, so I think that might be a reasonable inclusion, given that we have some pretty strong weapons. Hmm. So I think he can go back in. And then, sure, I think I want to be playing all of these. I don't really want to be playing Robo Buddy or Helpful Door Bot. And I think Vanquish is the only green card we have worth playing. We could also play like a Peacekeeper's Helm, since we do have the Grave Marker Oni. Huh. Strength of Many might also be really good in our deck, given that we have so many little dorks. But the card itself just isn't that strong, so I think we'll leave it out for now. Okay, so we'll add power here. I think this is way too much justice. Well, I think, so we have one, what do our influence costs look like? I guess we want to hit double black pretty early on. Yeah, so I think that's, we could potentially fit in another justice card. Lockhorns, bunch of nonsense, Mr. Grimy. Seek power, vanquish, manufacture, gun down. Manufacture is going to be sick with these two merchants. <laughs> okay. Um, what else we got? Lock horns, rapid shot. We got two gun downs. Gosh, I wish there was something to help shore up the early game. Um, yeah. I don't know. Six, seven. So we're actually playing more shadow sources, but I think that's okay, given that we have... Double Shadow on Corrupted Umbrin and Double Shadow on Hair Trigger Pistol. And then I think all of our... Did I see a Double Fire somewhere? Hmm. No, I guess not. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, this seems okay. I guess we can move it around later if we feel we need to change something, but for now, this seems like a pretty good start. Cool. I'm into it. Alright, let's jump into game one. Alrighty, we got game one against hands. Hmm, I'm very tempted to keep this. Yeah, we get one extra draw. We have all of our influences, all of our influence problems fixed. It's a little bit risky, but I think this is fine. So hopefully we draw into like some Brennan drones or something, or you know, just a couple of not quite what I was thinking of. <laughs> That's fine. Hmm. Maybe scrap punch and come down on one. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Um. So yeah, I guess we fire off a seek power. We have all of our influence requirements already. So there's a grenade drone. We'll pass. Hmm. No, thank you. That's pretty good. Um, I think we can run out the Shadow Sigil. It's probably one not worth playing this right here. Yeah. So I think what we can do is just play the Recoglator next turn, and then we're all set. I guess we can hold up Lockhorns if that ever comes up for whatever reason. Sure, goes to 27. Oh, jeez, what? <laughs> um, no thanks. Alright, cool. So we're probably taking another 5 on the crack pack. Do you have anything worth taking here? Hmm. No, I guess not. There's your recogulator. And we'll pass through. Thank you. 
Uh, I think it's worth blocking right here. We're going to get two 1-1s. One and if something happens to the Scrap Hound, I don't want to have held the Recogulator back just to have Grenadins to pump the Scrap Hound with. Um, okay. This is interesting. I feel like a cut ties is coming on. Sure. Take two. Okay. That's pretty good. Um let's see. I think I'm down with using a Carindon merchant. Hmm. But there's really nothing in the in the board that we really want to grab right now. So maybe not. I think what we could do is. Yeah, Shadow Sigil, pass turn, then we can play the Welding Torch on the follow-up and shoot the Rotor Cycle. I kind of like that. Yeah. We'll pass here. Sure. Take another two. Yep. Um, hmm. Is that worth using Gun Down on? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, welding Torch... Oh jeez, hold on a second. So five damage you without quick draw, but everything's gonna have quick draw. Man. Yeah, I think we still do this. Let's go. Welding torch, shoot this guy. And then pass turn. Sure. Hmm. I don't want to use lock horns on this guy right now before we can draw cards off of it. And then. Are we okay with this waiting game? Is it worth playing a hair trigger pistol? Bomb hmm. armament. So burglars is useless. Cover of darkness is useless. Um. If we use this right here, that's seven. And he's probably not gonna block it, but he doesn't have any good attacks either. Hmm. And then next turn we swing, that'll be four. And he has to double block. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, we'll leave this guy back because our life total's kinda low. Yeah, so like this turn he's not gonna block it. He'll go to 20. Um, we'll pass turn. Next turn, I don't know. Maybe he'll block it next turn, but it seems kind of unlikely. Sure, I'm okay with that. Um, then... I think I definitely want to play this guy this turn. But unfortunately, our Scrap Hound has already used his ability, so we can't, like, take something to beat it. Um, well, maybe we can just use Gun Down on one guy. Let's see. Merchant, Sigil, Madness, Burglarize, so nothing really exciting. Yeah, maybe we'll just run with one of these out. Um, I think we'll play Gun Down right here. Yeah. That pass turn. Probably should have done that pre combat and swung with both. Yeah. Oh well. Misplaced. Okay. Take two, go to 12. At a certain point, I think we just have to run out the. I guess we don't have to, but. We'll attack right here. And then play this guy. We're not quite within striking distance yet. Cover of Darkness will... Well, let's see. If we play this guy, 
that'll be 9, 10, 11, and then that'll be 12, 13. No, that'll be 10, 11, so Madness won't get there either. We're still one off. Let's just pass. Oh, wow. Um, well, I think we block here. I'm kind of feeling a pensive lumen coming on, but I think we're okay with that, too. Okay, sure. You got a great tender, capture the devoted, wow. Um, yeah, so I think we swing here. Okay, take him to eight, and then this is probably gonna be a good time for uh, cover of darkness. Is that right? Yeah. That seems fine. Then we can play this guy. Pass turn. Yeah. So I think we we're just gonna chump block the Catro with a Grenadine next turn and then hopefully sling in for lethal the following turn. Oh man, no life game, please. Sure, we'll go to seven. Um Yep. Risk it for the biscuit. Alright, we did it. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Okay, rank 13. We have... This hand is quite good, actually. Much better than the one we kept last game. So, we're definitely gonna keep this. Turn 1 Oni Run is super nice. And then... Having Granite and Drones as well as Granite Acolytes. Really good for us. And that's meant we have Double Black for the Corrupted Umber. So I'm really liking this hand. There's an Oni Ronin. We'll probably end up trading with the 2-2 he made off of the training ground. But I think that's okay. We'll get a Warcry proc out of it. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> that's not how that was supposed to go. Um, sure. There's a Grenadine Drone. We'll pass turn. Huh. That kind of threw a wrench into our plans. Now, I think... Yeah, Grand Acolyte, this guy. Swing? You'll probably just block the Terriax Hatchling. Which I think I'm okay with. Yeah. Well, let's do it with this guy. Or not? Cool. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have a lot of flyers in this deck, so... Or maybe not at all, so I think this might be a tough card to deal with. Sure, you got a 2-2 bump. And I know you have another Hatchling in hand. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. Try this again. Interesting. Alright. Here's a Corrupted Umber. We'll pass the turn. Hmm. Kind of seems like he has some sort of combat trick. Not sure what that would be, though. Maybe like a jump kick or something? I think I just offer this. Maybe this? Yeah, I think I just offer this. Okay. Oh, scavenging spike back. That's what it is. <laughs> or maybe pensive lumen. Gosh, that's silly. Should have thought of that. Oh well. Never mind. That is not what I thought it was. Hmm. Interesting attack on his part then. Um let's see. Grave marker Oni. We've got the welding torch in hand, so I don't really see a need for that. If we suit this guy up to a 6-6 six, six, though, we could attack with it. Yeah, I don't think that's necessary either. We'll play a clan wall breaker and pass turn. Yeah, hopefully we can draw a rapid shot uh, to pair with this guy. That was so interesting. Why would you turn him down for a second? Oh man. Double the cost of the card, sure. Goodbye, Welding Torch. It's been nice. Um. Oh man. 
Is this time for a bio armor? <laughs> that can't be right. Right? Yeah, I think we gotta send the Welding Torch back, though. Then we play a Vile Varmint, because, well, he's got another Hatchling in hand. Hmm. Gosh, if only Madness was a fast spell. Yeah, I guess we'll do this. Send back a Welding Torch. Grab a Vile Varmint. And... Pass turn. No attacks, right? Whatever. Cool. I'll take a freebie. Hmm. Yep, you got another hatchling. Take three. Yep. Life's hard. Uh, okay. Oh, man. <laughs> it means instantly punished for not grabbing the badness. Anyway, this is a Vile Varmint. There's a Scrap Hound. We'll pass turn. So this is probably going to block the three, two, and then we'll see what to do from there. Yep. Sure, you gotta live the Oh wow. That actually helps quite a bit. I think we just go for this. Uh that's a silly block. Well, maybe not. Yeah, so if I do that, yeah, okay. So he can kill it in one swing. Um, I think we still go for the rapid shot. Uh, sure. So five here, and then just two there. Yeah. And if I eat something, that'll go to a three three. Uh, that's probably not worth it. Cool. We did get a good bit of health off of that though, and then I think we can start swinging in with these two guys, and then that'll be able that'll let us proc a red macaroni, and I think we have what like a a final shot. Oh my god. <laughs> Never lucky. Um, sure. Oh, oh, that's right. We do have other weapons. What am I saying? Um, it's a shame we lost our overwhelmed guy. But I think hair trigger pistol might be pretty good. Yeah, it'll let us at least push a lot of damage, which is cool. And then Beast Caller's name, that's probably moot at this point. Yeah, I'll take a hair trigger pistol. That's turn. Um, oh gosh. What is that? It's two, two, two. I think it's the eight. Sure. I think I'm okay with that. Here. Spike back is fine. Um. <laughs> Um, God, do we put the hair trigger pistol back? You know, I'm probably putting the final shot back. I just don't see us casting it this game. We can grab a madness and then hope to steal a creature and then sacrifice it to the scrap hounds. Yeah, we'd have to top deck a power to do that though. I think I'm kind of into it. Um, Alternatively, this will be seven right here. We can go like hair trigger pistol. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Okay. So I was thinking we could hair trigger pistol and then swing in. That'll probably be like five, nine. But then we don't have enough to cast a Caradon version this turn. So I think this has to happen. Take the madness. Sure. And then I think we can get away with this attack. Yeah, seems fine. Sure. And then we can pass turn. Yep, I think I'm in for blocking both of these next turn with the uh, Scrap Hound and the Carondon Merchant. Just to prevent the most amount of damage. Because I think we have it on the crackback. If we can use Madness to steal a guy, plus an extra three damage from Hair Trigger Pistol. <laughs> Looking like a constructed deck out here. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's just. We're gonna go on damage control. Um, yeah, three, three. Okay, so we're dead to torch, we're dead to fiery fissure. Oh man, that's brutal. But I think we still have it, right? 
Nope. We just lost one from that. Uh, yuck. No, I don't think that's going to do it. Yeah, we lost four power right there, and then... Hmm. So if we steal this guy, that'll be three, five, hair triggers will be eight. We don't have a way to sacrifice anything. Yep, we lost our scrap hound, which is kind of a bummer. Man, that's unfortunate. Thought we were doing real good there for a second. Okay, so do we have any way out of this? I guess we can go... Steal a guy, that's not going to work. Yeah, we need to put three toughness in front of him, which I don't think we can do. Yep, that's it. Oof. Bummer. Alright, let's keep going. Alrighty. Game three against Mansika. And... This does have turn one Oni Runner on the play. Plus the Lockhorns to get rid of any one drops they might have. I think I'm in for this. This gun down's a little bit awkward on the curve, but I think the rest of these cards are reasonable. Maybe we can get a couple of War Cry triggers in and make some really big unit and snowball the game off of there. Who knows? Sure. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. That was that was rude. Sure. Take two. We have a two drop. Yeah, this this is fine. Man, that was rude, but <laughs> what? Wait, what? Huh. This only happens when I'm recording videos. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, round four against Michael. Hmm. Unfortunately, I think we have to send this one back. Yeah, our lowest cost of card is a rapid shot, which doesn't do anything without any units, and 4, 5, and 6 does not make a good curve, so. Off you go. Hmm. Okay. A little bit better. Um, we at least have corrupted number on 4, which is nice, but uh, this one might be a little bit loose. Yeah. Man, a 2 drop would have been great there. Uh. Okay, I guess we can go Wall Breaker on four, Beast Caller's Amulet on five? Hmm. Actually, this seems pretty tempting. Um, oh wow. <laughs> okay, this worked out really well. Let's go Lockhorns right here. Beast Caller's Amulet, and I think I want to Berserk it just to guarantee we get the Beast this turn. Sure. Got a 5-5. Five, five. And... Probably take on a 4, yeah. We need to block the first time. Well, you shouldn't block the first or second time, but if they don't block the first time, I usually don't see them blocking the second time. You got a 5-5 five, five flyer. I think I'm in with these two. Yeah, if he wants to double block the Corrupted Umber in, like, I don't have a choice there. Oh, okay. Man, what is with these opponents? Sure, I guess we'll take it. All right, just trucking along. Let's keep going. I don't know what it is about getting matched against bronze players, but... <laughs> I feel like maybe it's just the time of day. I don't know. In any case, um, seems fine. 
Yeah, I'm kind of hesitant to fire off a seek power on turn one, just in case we draw a green source or like another black source. So let's go black source past turn. Yeah, and then if we don't get anything, if we don't draw another power next turn, I think we'll just play this. Um, mm, that's awkward. Yeah, well, I think we can run out the, the, the disassembler now. Yeah, past turn. I guess that does give us another turn to draw into something power-ish. Okay, um, well, that doesn't really help us, because... We still don't know what to search for, but I think we can just play the Beast Colors Amulet here and make a 5-5. Five five. That seems pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably just grab the Green Source next turn, just because we have the Vanquish in hand and we don't have the Corrupted Umbrella or the Hair Trigger Pistol. Sure, you got a 4-1. That seems fine. Yeah, what is... <laughs> How strange. Um, yeah, we're not Vanquishing that. We'll assume with these two. I don't know if he takes the block. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, Beast Caller's Amulet's not a very good card after uh, you've already made the Beast. Oh, the Beast is premium, too. Okay. And yeah, I figure we just saved the Vanquish. No use using it on 4-1. Uh, we have Gun Down back up, which is good. Swing for 8 here. This one looks all but locked up. Sure. Um, this is greedy, right? Fix. All right, let's keep going. Turn one, Grenadin Drone, Lockhorn's backup, Carondon Merchant on three. Yeah, this is an awkward vanquish, but I think I'm okay keeping this. Yeah, it's a bit loose. Loose in the sense that, like, we have cards we can cast for the first couple of turns, but it's just kind of awkward in that it's not very strong. Uh, oh, well, there's our vanquish. That's neat. And we can probably hold on to this Carathon Merchant until, like, we see something... Like, we there's something that we have to grab. Uh, oh, cool. Her Cogulator is pretty sweet. If we can draw our, like... Well, I don't know. Ravenous Thorn Beast? The Madness might be pretty good. Oh, wow. Sure. Discarded a Flashy Duelist? That's... Interesting. Yeah. You probably got a Vanquish? <laughs> I don't know. Unless you want lock horns. That's cool too. I don't mind. Draw card four. Okay. Yeah, I'll we'll play this guy on four. Pass turn. That's pretty good. Let's, uh... Still don't really have anything we want to grab. I guess we can grab the Madness and then Berserk it? Yeah, that doesn't seem too bad, actually. Let's try that. So, Carondon Merchants... Put back... I guess Lockhorns is probably the weakest card here. Yeah. And we'll grab a Madness. Hopefully that'll dissuade him from attacking. And then we can play it, and then Bruce's Urgit, and then swing. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. This seems fine. Cool. Pass turn. And then, yeah, now we can just block out the Carathon Merchant. Uh, or, yeah, I like that block. Sure. 
sure. You get a 1 1 grab. Seems good. And a Zenith Destroyer. Uh, now, I guess. Playing two 2 drops doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, we can start nugging him with uh, Dissembler damage, and this blocks the Xenon Destroyer pretty well. Or the Moonlit Gargoyle. Sure, we got Nightfall. Yeah, I'll block there. Oh well. Yep. <laughs> you got it, bud. Let's see. Out of these, kind of feeling a corrupted umbrin. Yeah, that seems fine. So we're taking another four in the air, which kind of sucks. Um, I think I'm okay with blocking this. Yeah, seems good. Sure, you know, they just banned it. Um, hmm. That's probably coming out right now. Now, Cover of Darkness does give this guy flying, which is kind of a bummer. Hmm. Is there anything else? I guess we can grab that Lockhorn's back. <laughs> it's not very good without, uh... What do you call it? It's not very good without, um... Quick Draw, though. Welding Torch would also be really sick here. Yeah, I can't say I mind a Welding Torch. Maybe we just... Yeah. Let's do this. Sure. Okay. Gain 3 life. We'll play this. Grab our power. Play it. And then play the Great Marcaroni. Grabbing a... Yeah, I think it should be a Welding Torch. Cool. Yeah. We can pass turn on that. Yep, take one. Seems good. Uh, oh wow. Yes, please. Hmm. Ooh, that's tempting. I don't think we can pass that up. Yep, and I think we want to grab... That Lockhorn's back? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Whatever. We'll grab it. Um, I think we wanted eventually just to deal with this Unseen Agent. And sure, we'll play another Granite past turn. Sure. Okay. This is going pretty well. Um, what? I wanted the small guys? Yeah, sure. And I think we can attack these two. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Uh, sure. Interesting. I would not have made that block if I were him, but I am not, so. Okay, um, yeah, this is looking a lot better for us than it was a couple of turns ago. Um, I kind of want the final shot on this guy. Yeah, it seems really good. And, oh, that guy's got quick draw, huh? Yeah, we'll shoot him. Yeah, let's have at least two. Uh, yeah, pass turn. Yeah, so we have like... Oh, <laughs> that's gonna go really well with the Beast Caller's Amulet. Sure. Fred, you're taking a lot of damage here. I don't want to play it right now. Um, oh, that might be a good time to use Lockhorns, actually. 
Sure, we'll do that right now. It looks like he has a fast spell. Hmm. It'd be nice to draw another power here. Well, maybe not. I guess that's not necessary. Um, five, one, two. Yeah, we'll try it. Okay, cool. Alrighty, steal 100 cards. It's not a good achievement. Alright, cool. Five and one, let's keep going. Hmm. Now I think I want to send this one back. With one more power, this hand can be really good. But seeing as we're on the play, I'm kind of worried what's going to happen if we don't hit that last power. Yeah, we'll redraw this. Hmm. A little bit slower, but uh, yeah, I think maybe the other one was better. <laughs> Who knows? The other one kind of uh, hinged on us drawing a third power. Um, this one, I think, is functional without it, so... Okay, cool. Uh, that's definitely going to be a Warped Manufacturer, which will bring us to nine cards in hand. Cool. Hmm. Sure. Drifter's gonna look really embarrassing in a second. Yeah, I think I'm in for making a Grave Marker Oni next turn. Just a space. And then if he doesn't block, we can play Recalculator. If he blocks, we can play a, uh, whatchamacallit. Hmm. Yeah. I think the plan is still the same. Yep. Cool, 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 cool. And, uh, we'll grab a Wealth Torch. I think that's our best card. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any sneaky ways to uh, get a Beast Caller's name in there. Unless we want to, like, Karen's on Merchant, find the cover of Knights, and then play it on something, and then swing in, and hope he doesn't have a removal spell this entire time. Throughout this entire convoluted process. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's I feel kind of okay. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't have played all those out. Yeah, definitely. that was definitely a mistake, now that I think about it. Karen's on Merchant could easily put some of these back. They could have turned these into real cards. Um, got a little fixated on that play. 3-3, three, three, sure? That surprises me. Um, just a little bit. But, I think we're still okay. Probably not gonna play anything else. Yeah. It's a corrupted operable pass turn. I think if I draw the next power, I will just play this, shoot the 3-3, three, three, and then swing it with this guy. And I think I really like that play. Yeah, one of the reasons uh, Manufacturer is so good is because uh, if you're playing Merchants, it just kind of lets you... Uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it lets you put them back for real cards. The 1-1 one -one Grenadines, which, I don't know. Here on the board, they're not really doing anything, so... Um, I guess I could swing with this guy. I don't really want to trade with the 3-3, though. I'd rather just torch that. Hmm. We could just play these two in past turn. Yeah, that seems fine. I don't know. I could have sent one back for this for the sigil, but I think we're more than likely to draw one up the next couple of turns. And I don't know. It feels kind of bad to like mark it for a sigil and then flood out later in the game. Yeah, if only we hadn't played all these guys. Seven, sure. You got a Kopesh, six, seven. That's almost definitely eating a Vanquish. Uh, the question is, is it eating it now or later? Hmm. Yeah, probably now. Well, I guess it could be more mana efficient to play the Welling Torch this turn than past turn. Yeah, but that's going to run into, like, Downfall or something. Alright, let's do that. And then we'll pass turn. So, put this on here, make it into a 6-6, six, six, shoot the 3-3, three, three, swing team? That'll be, like, 12 right there. 
Oh, wow. Okay. You got it. You got it again. Um, might be okay with putting a grenade drone back. So we're getting pretty close to um, Cover of Darkness lethal territory. In fact, if we draw a power next turn, I think we just go for it. Sure, sure. Makes sense. You got some gremlins. That's everything for the manufacturer, right? Yeah. That's all three. Um, well, maybe just A space here? <laughs> Thinking is hard, I guess. So we see with this. You'll probably block these three, and then block here. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, then we can file varmint for nightfall lethal. Alternatively, he lets this through, or chump blocks it. And we lose a bunch of dudes, but I think I'm okay with this. We have grenade and drone on defense duty if it comes to that. Sure, that's a good block. Taking three here. Be losing a lot of things. I think I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. So, we we'll use cut ties here. Oh, that feels so wrong. Whatever. So, this guy will survive though, um, which is the important thing. And I'm not sure how many more seconds he can take. Um, cool, you get two one ones. Yeah. Well, oh, never mind. We can't play our, uh... Never mind. I was thinking about we could grab the cover of darkness afterwards, but I think it's alright. Alright, cool. Moving on up. Great. We got hopefully one more, maybe two more, maybe three more. Nope, couldn't be three more. Only two more. Alright, let's keep going. All right, round eight, I believe. And I think I'm okay with this opener. We could be a little bit greedy and send this back, but we do have, well, we're one shadow sigil short of hitting all of our influence requirements. Actually, yeah, this feels relatively low powered. We'll send this back. Hmm. I don't hate this, but it definitely needs some more power. We can go turn one Oni Road and turn two Scrap Hound Granite and Drone. And then hopefully we'll be able to hit turn three for Manufacture, turn four for Recogulator and Scrap Hound activation. Sure. You got one of those. There's an Oni Road and we'll pass turn. We. Nope. We don't have all of our influence requirements. We need double green for that. Or double black for that. We'll attack here. And then... I think Grenadine and Drone Scrap Hounds. Unless they somehow show four factions Torrential Rain. Then we're super punished. Hmm. Okay. Those are some good Warcry triggers. I guess we'll swing here. And I'm in for a Ravnus Thorn Beast right here. 
Yeah. I think that's the best way to start applying pressure. We'll pass turn here. Graceful calligrapher. Yep. Alright. Um seems like a good time to use this ability. And we'll just stack with these two. Sure. Downfall to 6-6, six, six, uh, five, 5 stays alive. Seems alright. Um, no blocks. Hmm. We could play the Welding Torch here. Nah, that seems a little greedy. Yeah. Let's go swing with a 5-5. Five, five. It's not going to force the block, but it's very close. Take it to 2. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, and then... Yeah, I want another lethal attacker on board. So we'll play the Recogulator in past turn. Yeah, so basically this lets us A space next turn, and he needs, like, two more blockers. Or, like, a blocker and a way to deal with the third creature which I'm not sure you can put together. Versus like, oh, I guess the Scrap Hound with the uh, Warcry Trigger would have been okay as well. All right, what's this? Warcry? I'm 100% okay with that. Hmm. One more? What is the worst possible card for us here? Is it a Crown Watch tactic, maybe? I guess Entrapment would also be pretty bad. I don't know. I think we're healthy enough. We don't need to make that block. It's a little bit risky making the double block. Uh, okay, sure. Well, this is a very disappointing Vanquish. we attack with all three, these two are going to get eaten. We're going to get two one ones. He'll lose his Tranquil Scholar. Hmm. Weirdly enough, I think this might be a Welding Torch turn. Because I kind of like the idea of wiping his entire board. And leaving nothing behind for the Spirit Stalker. Or, like, I guess he can, like, use it on itself at that point. But I don't think we really mind if he does that. Yeah, let's try that. So this will go up to a 6-4, 5-5, and so he'll block these and block that. Okay. Yeah, so he can, like, leave one of these guys alive. Probably the 3-4, the 2-4. If he wants to leave the 2-4 alive, he can give it lifesteal, but it's not going to be enough to keep him alive. If he wants to leave the 3-4 alive and then tries to pump it somehow, we have the Vanquish back up. He really can't afford to double block anything because these are all lethal attackers. And so if he double blocks, one of them's going to get through. He's going to die. Sure. Okay. So the Spirit Blade Stalker stays alive. And he still needs to play... I guess two more units this turn. Um, Harsh Rule gives it to him? <laughs> Yep. All right. So seven one. That was all right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, to everybody watching, <laughs> this is kind of a. I don't know. I thought the draft was really interesting, but the games themselves turned out to be pretty uneventful. And so I think the double merchant experiment worked out really well. Um, I think it kind of let us pick a couple of cards later on in the draft knowing that we were going to run like multiple merchants um i guess we didn't we could have run the triple merchant or whatever but like kind of placing that emphasis on those whereas like yeah so basically what, it, what i'm getting at is i think the first pick early pick merchants are like a lot better than like the fourth pack merchants because it gives you so much more opportunity to keep an eye out for like oh okay like 
we can, you know, pick this madness specifically for the board, even though we don't have anything to use it with. Um, I guess we have like Thorn Beast and like two Scrap Hounds, so we could have played a main deck, but I think this was a really good uh, card for the board. Um, two Merchants turned out to be really good. I think Karen Bar Merchant's much better in draft than he is in Constructed. Um, yeah, this 2 1 body's just not doing much against like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> Kennedans. Uh, we never cast the Grimy Alpluatra, which is kind of funny. Um, and I think the Justice Splash worked out well for us. Yeah, Vanquish with like four Justice Sources is like, it's a lot of, it's like maybe a little bit more fixing than we need, but I didn't really see anything else that I was super excited about playing. So I guess like, what do we have? We had like a Peacekeeper's Helm and like a Strength of Many. Yeah, those are like the other two potential splash cards, but it's like, honestly, I didn't think those were good enough to warrant a splash. Um, maybe the Peacekeeper's Helm, definitely not the strength of many. And so I think this Vanquish was perfectly fine on its own. The rest of the deck was fine. I think the one drops are really where the strength of this deck was. Everything else was like pretty lackluster. Um, yeah, going like Clan Wallbreaker, Recogulator, Grave Marker Oni, these aren't very good cards, but uh, having all these weapons in addition to the Grave Marker Oni, I think was really good for us. Um, and then, of course, like, Grenadine Drones early. Oni Ronin's very good early. Scrap Hound is, like, not good early, but, like, you can play it on one and turn into a 6-6, six, six, like, several turns later, which is quite good. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. This, this all about seems... <laughs> Beast Colors Amulet came in a couple of times. This card looks sweet and premium. Never seen it before. Um, and Final Shot is final shot. I think it's much worse than Welding Torch despite the ceiling on these cards being very similar. Where the final shot's like 8 mana, cast a gun down, plus 5, plus 1, quick draw, and the Welding Torch is like 7 mana, plus 3, plus 2. Uh, just, this card is just way better. I, I don't know. I think we spellcrafted it more than we regular cast it this time, but the ability to go like, turn 4, Corrupted Umber, and turn 5, slap a Welding Torch on it is just so good. Like, it's just way better than having to wait until 7 mana to cast the final shot. And then, like, 8 mana if you want to get the good part out of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this deck turned out pretty well. Uh, I think a couple of our games were sort of non-games, which is a little bit disappointing, but I think it just goes to show, like, <laughs> like my deck last week, I thought that, that deck was insane, and that deck went 3-3. Three and three. This one, like, we just had a couple of opponents, I'm sure they were just power screwed or something, but they just scooped on turn 2. And it makes for some boring games, but I don't know. If anything, it just goes to show that really any deck can get there. Like, any deck can get to seven wins. Um, just some of them require a little bit more luck than others. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess everybody, thanks for watching. Um, oh, chests. That's a thing. Cool, 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 cool. It's funding next time's draft. Um, nothing exciting here. But we didn't get any Dusk Road packs, which is nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, everybody, thanks for watching. As usual, questions and comments, YouTube or Reddit. Uh, this video will be going up, as always, every Wednesday morning is what I try to aim for, but sometimes Wednesday afternoon. Um, unfortunately, I may be out next week. I'm not really sure at this point. I've got a couple of uh, health issues. Nothing serious, but it might involve a little bit of time at like doctor's offices and stuff. And so between work and other obligations and then having to you know, cram a couple more errands into there. I might not get a video out next week. Um, if that's the case, sorry, wait a little bit longer, but uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next week. And as always, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time, whenever that is.